This was fucking nuts, so did you... I don't know if you guys saw... Well, I retweeted three of these things. You probably weren't interested, but... On my stream, I can talk about whatever I want, and you have to be interested. So, this is fucking crazy as a... As, like, a security researcher. Uh, boot ROM is... Uh, ROM, obviously, standing for read-only memory, so it's unpatchable. This is part of the, like... It's a tethered exploit. You would still need to be connected to a computer to execute this every single time. But having a boot ROM exploit in anything that's publicly available, like iPhone 10 is not old. iPhone 10 came out in 2017. So that's pretty nuts though that it's still available for that. But uh, this means a lot of stuff, so. This means that you can have an untethered jailbreak now, because most of the time when you're jailbroken, uh, it's a kernel-level exploit that they get into the... They, they exploit the kernel, and the kernel is only exploitable when it's running. So, boot ROM exploit means that you could theoretically have an untethered jailbreak. You could turn your device on and off, and it would still be jailbroken. Uh, and for a security r side of things, this means that you can break into any device that you have physical access to before, uh, iPhone, before and including iPhone 10. So that's pretty fucking cool. And this, the guy, I, I love this part of it. He's like, this is possibly the biggest news in iOS jailbreak community in years. I am releasing my exploit for free for the benefit of iOS jailbreak and security research community. He could have probably sold this to the fucking CIA for like... I'm, I'm thinking that he could probably at least have gotten like close to half a million dollars. Or more. Like... This is a lot of devices. This is... Every iPhone, like, uh, I know that iPhones don't make up, like, a huge amount of the market share of smartphones anymore. Like, most, it's like 80-something percent, 88 percent of all uh, smartphones are running Android. But every iPhone before the iPhone XS and, uh, 10R and the brand new ones is now permanently and unpatchably security hold in the boot ROM. So remember, like, I remember when the FBI was like, hey, can we, Apple, can you, like, break into this phone for us? And Apple said, uh, no, we can't do that. And then they sent it away to some specialty shop somewhere that had one of these exploits, uh, Maybe not specifically one similar to this, but still like a an exploit that you could use to brute force passwords on a locked iPhone to on uh, to decrypt it. And and it worked. Like there there are security holes that are private like that, and people will say like, okay, we have this exploit, and we're not publishing it. You can just uh, pay us, and we'll will break into the phone and then give it back to you. But this guy is like, hey, I, d I just discovered the biggest fucking security hole in iOS since 2010, so like nine years ago, that now invalidates security. Well, not invalidates, but uh, this is... Not what he says down here. Blah, 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 blah. What was I going to say? I lost my train of thought there. Um, essentially, it's just really crazy. And it means a lot of stuff for the jailbreak community, and it means a lot of stuff for the security community. And the most interesting thing is that you could theoretically dual boot your iPhone to run Android as well, because 
you can just port the drivers for that's that's the nice thing about the homogenous side of iPhones too is like every iPhone 6s I think that there might be like multiple revisions with like different batteries or camera modules or something but basically there's very little hardware and that makes exploits like this possible and affect everybody before whatever generation but it also means that you can like, you could just port Android Pie to the fucking, or Android, what do they call it? I, I think they're just calling it Android Q? That's the new one? Android Q? Uh, you could just port that to every fucking iPhone and have dual-booted iOS and Android on one phone, which is really cool. But. That's, how, that's how real nerds do it. They're like... I don't really care about the money or anything. I'm just some guy on Twitter who found out this really cool thing. And I'm going to give it away for free. Very cool. I wish I was that smart. I think a lot of people pretend that they're... I, I understand that people that are doing stuff like that are so many levels above anything that I know. I, it's just fun to look at the things that they do. I don't pretend to have any idea what they're doing. But there are a lot of people that are at my level where, like, sure, I can follow instructions and run somebody's program or, like, make little tweaks to PHP programs or something. I can write trivial shit, but... People that are doing stuff like this are crazy smart. I don't even know where you'd start, to be honest. And this guy uh, breaks it down. You can upgrade or downgrade your iOS version because Apple, uh, if you want, you can't do like a flash. You know how on Android you can just unlock your bootloader and then flash whatever rom you want like if if you wanted to downgrade android versions you could just flash a different rom but on ios you need to have your shsh blops signed by apple so they have a a window a window of time where they're signing uh, different versions of iOS, right? So if you wanted to downgrade to iOS 12.4, you can't anymore. It's You cannot restore it with iTunes. And that's the only way to do it because it's a proprietary... Uh, it's a proprietary installation thing. Uh, you can save your SHSH blobs, which would mean that you can downgrade to whatever version that you have the save blobs for. Basically, you're just like spoofing a signing certificate. Like, you captured Apple's OK message for your specific phone for that specific version of iOS, and then you can just like replay that back to iTunes so that it'll verify it. But if you didn't save that, then you can never go back. But this totally circumvents that because it's a bootloader exploit. So now you can upgrade or downgrade to whatever version you want for any iPhone before X, uh, before 10. It's so cool. It's so cool. So if I have an iCloud locked phone, I could install a custom OS and be able to use it. Uh, yes, you could. That's really interesting news.
big brain boys figuring out big brain things. Nice liquor. Little Kato. Da 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 da. Where does the carpet begin and the dog begin? Who knows? So you're saying I should be buying unusable stolen locked iPhones and flipping them? Uh, you could do that, yes. But they could still have blacklisted IMEIs, which are burned into the hardware, I think. So unless there's some way to spoof IMEIs, which I don't think is possible. Uh, like, you'd be able to use the phone when, when it's iCloud locked. Uh... When it's iCloud locked, you just can't set it up. Like, it's permanently in the setup screen, so you can't get to your home screen to do apps or run anything. You're just stuck there. When you boot it up, it says, please verify, like, the iCloud ID to set this phone up. But you could get past that, but then to join it to a carrier... I know that there's, like, a carrier... Unified Blacklist. Uh, band IMEI number. Yeah, there might be some way to spoof it, I don't know, but it it would make sense that it's unspoofable if your SIM card talks to your phone and, like, reads the IMEI and then lets that phone accept messages or something. I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works. I'm dumb. <laughs> Look at this guy. That could be us. But I wonder how many people would actually have reported their phone stolen, right? Like, I... For example, my little sister got her phone stolen in a change room at high school. At a volleyball tournament or something. I don't think it was our high school. I think that she was at, like, a different school and somebody stole it. But she lost her phone in a theft like that. And what you can do is just log into your iCloud account and then lock it. But I don't think that that reports the IMEI number is stolen. So odds are most people aren't savvy enough to report that, right? I'm guessing so. Like, if you go to your carrier, your carrier has your IMEI number logged because they have it uh, 
In order to get your phone carrier unlocked, you need to verify your IMEI number. Look at this dancer. I, I missed this dancer the first time that I watched this. Ooh, she got the moves.